Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 This is the last and the maximum sound. We can hear you now, Papa. You can hear me. Yes, sir. Okay. Let us go on. Praise the Lord, our listeners, to this large hour. And uh, in the morning, I was uh, very hard when His Grace called me and said, the Bishop, uh, can you stand in for me? I'm going to do other things as required by the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda. I just said, you are welcome, my Archbishop. That's why I'm standing with you this uh, afternoon and thanking God that uh, the Lord has, uh, has chosen me through this to speak to you. It's wonderful that the, the, the theme, the main theme you have given me is, uh, which you are following this, uh, uh, this week is very important. Uh, growing in faith. And uh, you have given me a subtopic. And uh, the subtopic is faith in Christ, faith in Christ. And uh, let me read in the Bible, and then I continue. Already you have prayed, and now I want to read the Bible so that we know exactly what we are talking about, faith in Christ. Romans chapter 10, I read from verse 10, using New King James Version. For with the heart on believers and righteousness and with the mouth confess, confession is made and to salvation is made at salvation. Verse 11 For the scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. And verse 12 For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. And verse 13, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody can say, hallelujah. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Definitely, people to believe in Christ, they need a preacher and preachers as we are doing every lunch hour every Sunday, whenever we are called upon as ministers of God and ministers of the word of God, we have to preach, we have to teach. People cannot hear the word of God without preachers. That's why this afternoon, the lunch hour, as I started for the, His Grace, the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, I'm standing here to preach I will teach about uh, faith in Christ. I will not talk about the theme, 
because the theme somebody will talk about it and it's interesting and before we begin listen to this gentleman called the, i love this gentleman is called the, uh, uh, by the names max max is a wonderful person of god and the max lucado in his one day as he was studying and preaching the word this is what he had to say yeah, there is a story that the story is about uh, how he survived in his boat uh, what we call a hurricane storm a hurricane storm and he said an old, an old man or an old seaman gave max the advice to tell his boat boat to deep water drop four anchors on each corner of the boat and pray that the anchors held max survived the storm but he said that he learned an important lesson all of us need an anchor that will hold us somebody say amen an anchor that will hold us during the storms of life that anchor in our life is what we call faith faith acts as an anchor of the boat and we as Christians we as believers we need to have an anchor within our lives and that anchor is our faith the question is is that what have you put your faith in as i i begin and as i approach the theme where do you put and what does where do you put your faith in where do we find a faith now we are saying where do we find a faith strong enough to make it through the storms of life in our lives where do we find that and you can see max rocado because of the advice he received from an old sea man he managed to survive first what is saying to me we are like we are sailing in an ocean an ocean with our boat but we need an anchor i told you one time if you have ever seen me preaching i went through the waters of lake victoria and we are going to an island there in lake victoria but we needed the faith because the waters were so strong and deep but because of the faith we had we had to sail off and we reached the island the same way those who are saying to me we need faith we need faith, faith which acts like an anchor and where do we have it whatever troubles we are going through whatever circumstances we are going through whatever anxieties we are going through we shall be able to sail to sail off and reach our destination the important thing is how to reach our destination and peter has the answer we shall we may not even read there but first peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 12 talks about the, uh, the faith we need the faith which acts like an anchor in the lives peter peter knows how important faith is and he gives us a great picture of faith and our faith is very important you can't stand as a christian you can't stand as a believer you cannot stand as a born again person minus faith which acts as an anchor in your lives that's why it is important for us first to have faith in christ 
And we are so happy when we talk about faith in Christ. We are talking about the Son of the Living God, who is Jesus Christ Himself. And when you have Jesus inside yourself, He works as a, your faith will anchor in Jesus, and you'll be able to study every storms of life. I know, as I share this afternoon, many people are going through storms of life. Many people have found life difficult. Many people have cried and things have failed. Many people have worked and they have come out with methods and whatever and formulas. Things are not coming out. The only way things to come up is to have faith in Christ. Somebody say, Amen. To have faith in Jesus Christ. In order to understand what it means to have faith in Christ, we must first understand the nature of faith itself. You must understand the nature of faith itself. Faith contains three elements. One, knowledge. Two, assent. Three, trust. Let me repeat because I know people are writing. Faith contains three elements. One, knowledge. Two, assent. Three, trust. Let us go. Firstly, faith contains the element of knowledge. Faith must have content. Must have content. There must be something or someone to have you to have faith in. It is popular to say things like have faith or believe. But these things are ambiguous and even meaningless until we define, until we define what or whom we have faith. To have faith in Jesus or to have faith in Christ, we must have first some knowledge about who he is. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. In order to have faith in Jesus, we must know he is, we must know that he is the Christ, the promised Messiah who came to us to save his people from their sins. Somebody says, Amen. In order to have faith in Jesus, we must know that he is the Christ, the promised Messiah who came to us to save his people from their sins. We can go to Roman, to John chapter 1, verse 41, and see exactly what the Bible is talking about. John the gospel according to John chapter 1 verse 41. The Bible is very clear. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah which is translated the Christ. <laughs> Wonderful. He first found his, uh, his own brother Simon. Jesus. Finding his own brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the, the Christ. When the brother of Jesus, and not know who Jesus is, but he said, now we have found Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ. Our faith must be in the Messiah, the Savior, who is Jesus Christ. Let us also look at, at this uh, reading from the Bible. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall, you shall call him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, when you have Christ <laughs> in Jesus Christ, it means that he is, first of all, he is coming as Jesus. 
and he is coming to save us from our sins. Now, when you have Jesus, and when you have faith in Jesus, in Christ Jesus, it means that your faith is wonderful because your faith you are putting the Son of the living God who, is, who came to save us. Who came to, to save us and give us eternal life? We must believe that Jesus is God's only Son. Praise be to Jesus. Jesus is God's only Son. As, as John chapter 3 verse 16 says, who took a human, who took a human flesh, a human flesh, lived a life of perfect living, obedience to God, the Father willing to sacrifice his life by dying on the cross for our sins. Oh, Jesus came to die on the cross for our sins. Rose triumphantly from grace after three days, and he is now seated in heaven at the very hand of God. From grace, he will return to judge the world. What a wonderful story of Jesus Christ. This is a story I'm, I'll share with you in this, in this uh, uh, large hour service. Why are we, we see Jesus, God sending his only son, and his only son giving his life on the cross, sacrificing his life for us, we sinners, those who are listening to me, all of us who are sinners, we need a savior like Jesus Christ in our lives. And the Bible is clear. The Bible tells us that he is returning. He is coming in, the sec in his second coming to judge the world of its sin. Perhaps we can look at Acts chapter 1 and see exactly what the Bible is saying. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Who, I'm reading from New King James Version, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up, up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. We are sure that Jesus is coming the second time. And I believe people listen to me and viewing me in this program of lunch hour. Everybody is expected, expected of Jesus coming, knowing that when you believe and when you have faith in him, you are going to reject to in eternal life. And you see, when Jesus comes back in the second, his second coming, he's going to bring to glory all who eagerly await his coming. Be one of them who are, who are eager who is ready to receive Jesus Christ when he comes the second time? Our knowledge of Jesus needs to be as hastive, nor can it be in order, uh, to us in order to us to believe in him. Then secondly, we have talked about the element of assent. To assent means to agree that the knowledge we have is true. You must have said that Jesus Christ is the, the Son of the living God. And that is a true knowledge in our life. Now we may be tempted to stop here and think we have arrived at a complete def def definition, def def definition of faith. However, having knowledge about whom Jesus is, even asserting to that knowledge does not mean the person has faith in Christ. E.g., the devil and demons know who Jesus is and even acknowledge who he is. If you read Matthew chapter 8, verse 29, 
Mark chapter 8 verse 19 it will give you the whole story. And Mark chapter 1 verse 24, we do not have time to read there, but write, write it down, you read at home. And then James chapter 2 verse 19. But they do not believe, those demons and the devil himself do not believe in Jesus Christ, which brings us to find an element that unless we understand Jesus and we give our assent, we shall not know who Jesus is. Thirdly, we talked about uh, that faith contains the element of trust. To have faith in Jesus means to trust him. As I share in this last hour, trust in Jesus Christ. To have faith in Jesus means to rely on him and, and resign oneself to him. We need to resign what we think we know. We need to resign what we believe we understand and only think about Jesus Christ. Those who have faith in Jesus rely on him as the savior. Those who have the Bible, you can read John chapter 4, verse 42, and Titus chapter 3, verse 4. I'm talking about John chapter 4, verse 42, and Titus chapter 3, verse 4. And as we continue, and you must know that Jesus is Lord. To trust or to have faith in Jesus means to believe that his death was accepted by God as payment for our guilty and sin that is found in Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 that his perfect life and righteousness has been credited to you on the basis of your faith and you'll find that in Romans chapter 3 verse 21 to 22 to trust or to have faith in Jesus is to believe that his teachings and promises are true and to resign ourselves to follow him and live for him. Somebody say amen. To trust or to have faith in Jesus is to believe that his teachings and promises are true and to resign ourselves to follow him and live, and, and live for him. That's Matthew chapter 10, from verse 37 to 39. Or Matthew chapter 16, 24 to 25. Or Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Or Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. There are a couple things remember about faith in Jesus that are vital to a harmony recognition of God's work of grace in us and to a proper attitude attitude of gratitude to Jesus Christ for whom he is what he has done we need to have that attitude of gratitude of gratitude as born again as Christians, because what Jesus did for us is wonderful. First, believing in Christ is a gift of God. Believing and have to have faith in Christ is a gift of God. Ephesians chapter two, verse eight. Ephesians chapter two, verse eight, and Acts chapter thirteen, verse forty-eight. And not a reason for us who is not lost because for us we know Jesus Christ. The Bible is very clear. We should not boast as in the first Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. The Bible is very clear. We must not be, we must not look like we are smarter than anybody. We need to harm ourselves. And when we have our, this gift of faith, when we have ourselves in the gift of faith, then we shall understand what Jesus did for us on the cross. If we indeed have faith in Jesus, it is because God has given us the faith 
to believe. And secondly, it is Christ himself and not faith that is the grounds for our salvation. <coughs> Excuse me. Faith is the, is the instrument through which we receive Jesus Christ. Faith is the instrument through which we receive Jesus Christ. Faith is akin to the tube which transports blood during a blood transfusion. It is the blood, not the tube, that saves the person's life. However, without the tube, the person will not receive the life-saving blood. Let me continue. Comparatively speaking, it is the blood of Jesus that saves us from our morbid, sinful state. Of course, we have talked about Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, and Romans chapter 3, verse 23, and Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. Yet faith is the instrument or means through which we receive Jesus and his life-giving benefits. That's Romans chapter 5 from verse 1 to verse 2. And Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. And John chapter 3 verse 15. To have faith in Christ is a condition for hope of eternal life. Praise be to God. To have faith in Christ is a condition for hope of eternal life. That is John chapter 3, verse 15 to verse 16. And those who refuse to believe are clearly in a state of condemnation. That's John chapter 3, verse 18, or John 8, 24. Faith in Christ is faith in action. What? <laughs> faith in Christ is faith in action. What does, that, what does that mean? If you don't have faith, then you don't have faith in action in your life. Faith is a word of action. The Bible says, seeing their faith. Now Jesus is looking at people who do not have them to read, but you can go and read Mark chapter 2 and verse 5. Following, following, Jesus saw the action of these men and the action of faith. It is because of their faith that Jesus healed this person. It is because of their faith as an action in their life that this man was healed. We shall not go in the whole story how Jesus healed this person. Faith and believing almost means the same. Whenever you talk about faith and believing, or to believe a store, it means that it means almost the same thing. For God so loved the world as we see in in the, um, in John chapter three verse sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on Him should not perish but have eternal life. Your faith must be centered on Jesus Christ. Faith in Christ means that you believe in his infinite power, intelligence, and love. Faith in Christ will help you raise above your daily difficulties. This one we are talking about as I try to end. Let me repeat this, those who are waiting. Faith in Christ will help you raise above above your daily difficulties. I know what we go through. We need to have faith. Every difficult we have, faith will always lead us, will put us at the top. Faith in Christ will help you overcome temptations. When you have, Christ, you have faith in Christ, every temptation is coming across you. You will overcome it. The Lord will work mightily, mighty miracles, in our lives according to our faith. When you have faith, God is going to do and work miracles in your faith. And 
I thank God for this lunch, our friends. As I'm putting it, and as I aim to have faith in Christ, will lead you to your miracles. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Do you need a miracle in your life? You need to have faith in Jesus Christ. Miracles of healing, because you have faith in Jesus Christ. You receive miracles of healing. You will have miracles of getting a partner for those who have never got one. Miracles buying a block. Miracles of building your house. When you have faith, you have miracles. Miracles moving mountains. Say, hey, man, we have mountains which need to be removed. Unless you have faith in you, you will never remove those mountains. You have miracles of your blessings. I know the devil has taken away your blessings. Have faith in Christ from today onwards. God is going to restore your blessings right now as you listen to me. Listen to me. Having faith in Christ will make you enter new gates. I pray that God will open new gates for you because you have faith. You have faith in Christ. May the Lord open those doors of blessings to you, doors of many things to you. And if you have faith, you will move in a new dimension, a new direction, a new direction which, which will bless you. When you have faith, miracles of breaking chains, those chains which have tied you, you want to move, you don't move. You want to do something, you don't do it. You want to do business, you don't move. Faith will bring miracles which break, which will break chains. Faith will bring miracles of new vision. It's my prayer that you have a new vision right now from today onwards because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Faith will break all the strongholds you have. Why? Because in you, there is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And the strongholds. Which you are, which you face, which you are going through, because of your faith in Christ, they will be broken off. And uh, as I am, having faith will bring, will bring, will bring new life in you. You will be, you, you will begin to be happy. You know, the devil has taken away our happiness. You find somebody as if all the time we hurt. But I want to tell you, when you have Jesus, faith in Jesus, you will get new life and also understanding the word if you have faith you understand the word of god and whenever you read the word of god it will become a normal word of god in your life the word of action in your life and because of faith your miracles of you will become a dynamic disciple of jesus christ a dynamic disciple of jesus christ and i want to end by saying you will have miracles that your prayers will be answered in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening to me. I want to give people time either to pray and Madame uh, Lydia, Reverend Lydia, to wind up and, 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 and then we close this like Praise be to God. I spoke of this in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wow.